Hi, welcome back to my channel. I'm Daniela and today we'll continue with Mindhunter this time, the second episode of the second season. In the last episode, Shepard was fired or, you know, he retired. Um, in his place came another person um, and he seems more inclined more eager even to help them with their research. Uh, he gave them a bigger space, uh, allocated some people to help them to make their job easier. And he's, um, he's really just giving them anything and everything just so they can do their job and be able to get something out of it and to be used in the future. Holden had a panic attack, um, was in hospital, they released him but told him that he might have other panic attacks and he has to maintain his stress level low Anyway, as usual, I got something to drink. The episode is ready to start. So, without further ado, let's do this. He's not letting him sleep with her. Hmm. <laughs> They just moved in two months prior. It was a school day. Neighbors were coming and going all morning. One of them even saw BTK drop off the family car afterwards. I think he came in here. Two kids making their lunches. The other three had already gone to school. They had five kids in this house. Retired military. It makes no sense to come into a house with an adult male and a dog. Nothing makes sense. Took the money out of Mr. Otero's wallet, emptied her purse, and... Stole Mr. Otero's aviator's watch, but clearly robbery was not his motive. And the driver's licenses were missing. He was taking souvenirs. So the dad would have been about here, tied to the foot of the bed. Police reports said he was suffocated with a plastic bag and a t-shirt. Later we found there was a hole in it. Mr. Otero managed to rip it with his teeth. Killer took the plastic bag off, put the t-shirt on over his head so he couldn't tear it again, and then put the bag back on. And Mrs. Otero was on the bed. She had double ligature marks. Must have come too, so he had to do it again. You think that since it was his first try, he botched it. There was a chair here with deep carpet indentations. You think he sat to watch the boy die? Found a little girl hanging from this pipe. We kept thinking we'd catch him just around the corner. That first week after Otero, not one of us went home. My partner and I had stayed over the first three nights. In the house? Hoping the killer would come back. Did you see anything? Nothing. A month later, we stayed the night in there again with the psychic. <laughs> you consulted Yuri Geller before the <laughs> FBI. So is that true? Do these guys return to the scene of the crime? The psychopath feels guilty or something. Co-ed killer. He told us he went back, but not out of anything like guilt. He considered those places somehow sacred. I'd like to talk to Kevin. He took three bullets in the face. Spent a year in the hospital. Is he reliable? He's all we got. What do you remember of his clothes? How he was dressed? But how did they seem to you? Clean, dirty, cheap? Didn't seem cheap. Jacket was bulky. Nice. I figured it was just a robbery. I gave him the truck keys. Did he force you to tie Kathy up? Didn't force. He just told me. Told you how? Real simple. He made everything sound reasonable. He made me lie down, and he tied my hands behind my back. He tied my feet to the bed. He was fast with a knife. Like he'd done it before. Mm, he, he was almost gentle. He put something around my neck, and he started pulling. It was so fast. I just started kicking and twisting. I, I knew right then he was going to kill me. I was thrashing around so much, my feet broke loose. I stood up. I got my hands free. I saw him go for the gun. I grabbed at it, <laughs> fought for it. I got it turned, had it right at his stomach. I, I pulled the trigger twice, as hard as I could, but it wouldn't go off. He depends <laughs> the safety on 
everything would be different if I'd only shot him. He pulled the trigger. First bullet grazed my face. The second one went in the side of my head. I was awake the whole time. I decided to play dead. He must have heard me move because he was on me again. He got me, blew my teeth out. Then he went back to cat. I looked around, you know, for something to hit him with, but I thought the best chance was to get help. It's the best thing you could have done. I could have gone back in there. We'd have lost you both. I can't even imagine how guilty he feels. He wore a lot of big steel military kind. Joseph Otero's watch. That's that family, right? We'll catch him. I can't wait for that. What do you mean? I saw his face. He knows I'm out here every time I walk into his store, every time somebody walks into a room, even at church. <sighs> Must be horrible living your life like this like afraid of you know if something might happen to you he's gonna come back after you because you know he left a witness and always looking over your back and he has a like distinct marks now it's easily recognizable so yeah What's wrong? Nothing. It's okay. Honey, did you leave the back door open? I was taking out the trash. Just wanting to come see. Are you are you coming to bed? I'll be in soon. Uh -huh. This was a big risk. Her scene is the only one with Seaman present. She was clearly his primary interest. The rest of the family is just collateral. After the Ateros, all of his victims are women. None of the men were at home except for your witness, Brett's brother. Kevin wasn't expected either. So BTK changes his MO, and that's why he stabs the sister. I also think that he was exceptionally prepared. He practiced? Remember, Kemper practiced on dolls, animals. There's no way our guy doesn't have a rap sheet. Animal abuse, maybe peeping neighborhood girls, assaulting prostitutes. So what about his letters that he writes to the newspaper? He's equating himself with famous killers. Son of Sam, Jack the Ripper, Ted of the West Coast. That's gotta be Bundy. Who's Glattman? Harvey, famous for binding and strangling women in the 50s. He actually gives himself possible names. The BTK Strangler, Wichita Strangler, Wichita Executioner. We need to at least consider that Berkowitz is a blitz killer. He exhibits none of Kemper or Brudos' psychosexual motivations. By his own account, he walked up to cars, fired five shots, and then ran. We know BTK is inspired by Berkowitz. And we know BTK kills for sexual fulfillment. I'm not sure he's the madman he makes himself out to be. It's just enough fatter to show attention. And when he shot at couples in cars, he always shot at the passenger side. That was used to support the random argument. But in couples, the male is usually the driver. He never shot at the driver's side. He unleashed everything on the woman's side of the vehicle. I'm surprised the FBI hasn't come sooner. Well, damn. The night I was arrested, the mayor came to see me. You got so much publicity, there's a killer out in Kansas who idolizes you. He's writing letters to the press, and he's writing about you. Is he shooting me? Guy's killed seven so far. He even made a symbol. Show him the thing. What is that, boobs? It's a B. It's a complete ripoff. That's what we think. He breaks into houses, ties them up, strangles them. Calls himself BTK. It's hold on more quiet Wait, because of what Bill told I him. The son of Sam, or he is trying to control Sam. his stress. They had this absurd theory the gun somehow symbolized my penis. I'm not some crazed sex killer. I needed a name that explained who I really was, that I was being controlled by a 3,000 year old demon. People need to know demons are real. It was saying that. The dog was talking with him. My adoptive mother told me my real mother died. That often happens with adopted kids. Well, I was illegitimate. They both lied. It's about when I started hearing voices. The demons. Demons are powerful beings. They use your own voice, your own thoughts against you. They make you think you're crazy. When they get strong enough, they speak their name out loud. And once they've done that, they are in complete control. My neighbor Sam had a dog. Every night, this dog would howl. He would not shut up. He kept saying he needed blood. He demanded blood. I had no choice. Sometimes the voices came from inside the walls. Was that about the time you saw The Exorcist and read your books? Around then. 
Why not plead not guilty by reason of insanity? Why plead guilty and never get a trial where you could explain your demons? Because I am not insane. I knew it was wrong, but they made me do it. Hearing demons is quite possibly the textbook definition of insanity. It's a crock, isn't it? There's no voices, no demon. The dog doesn't talk. You saw a movie, read some books, and made it all up, so if everything went to shit, you'd have a way out. Do you want to forever be known at the FBI as the guy who let a Labrador land him in jail for the rest of his shitty life? They all bought it, David. Even the shrinks. Especially the shrinks. I'm very suggestible. Did you want to hear voices? I kept reading about them. They got kind of tied up with my fantasies and what you call a sex-starved daydreamer. But that's just me, that's not clinical. My killings were not sex crimes. I just wanted to kill them. Voices helped me justify what I already wanted to do. So you never picked anyone out in advance and surveilled them? No. Is that what Kansas does? You think so, from his letters? I just drove and drove. I'll bet he does too, Kansas. I never knew what I was looking for, but I knew her when I saw her. Did you ever go back to any of the crime scenes? All the time. Was it because you felt guilt or remorse? No. You'd relive it. Every detail. Even if he takes souvenirs, your guy, I guarantee you he goes back. The naming himself, communicating with the media, it all adds up to control. And Berkowitz can't control how women treat him or how he fits into his family, so he creates this monstrous persona that really is just a dumpy, awkward mailman. Mrs. Tench, are you the realtor for 1159 Cimarron Court? Yes. You need to know that the residence is, unfortunately, a crime scene. What, has there been a break-in? No, there's been a body found in the garage. <sighs> We're investigating it as a homicide. Who has access to or has recently entered the premises? Um, just me and the owner. I've only shown it twice. I'll need to get the names of anyone we've taken through the house. I didn't want to scare your wife, but I do need to get her shoes from when she was last in the garage. He was rattled. Oh, I can't imagine. This is awful. That just doesn't happen around here. It happens everywhere, Nancy. Damn. So that was a thing. Hold on and build Matt Berkowitz. Um, you know, was an interesting discussion. Uh Berkowitz, also known as Son of Sam, killed a bunch of people, of course, but um he kind of excuse himself by saying that you know it wasn't him a demon was telling him what to do and you know he tried to fight it off but he couldn't and the demon was in the dog but then in the wall so it worked for some time i mean it still landed him in jail <laughs> but you know it was a different take different excuse for the killings and you know uh, in, the, in that time you know, it uh, people were a bit more gullible let's say and it sounded better and the news just went with this newspaper and everywhere they just went with son of Sam uh, but uh, he confessed uh, that, you know, it's just an act. It's not that he's insane or he actually, you know, hears voices or in for him, you know, there are demons. It was all just an act. Uh, so Bill took, um, took over the case of BTK and start, started investigating. He went to the house of his uh, first victims, let's say, and they went over everything. They even met with um, 
the brother that managed to escape but unfortunately his sister didn't uh, she got killed she got stabbed and he got shot in the face uh, he went to they went to him because they weren't quite sure if it was BTK but after uh, the, the brother saying that BTK had a watch, some sort of military watch on his wrist, um, they confirmed that it, you know, it was the watch that uh, its first victims, the husband, had. And it was missing because, you know, BTK took it. Now, at the end, a murder happened in, um, I, I think, a house that Nancy is trying to sell or something. It, I don't think it's random. I think it's supposed to mean something. It's not just, oh, something happened in your garage and uh, we're never gonna talk about it ever again i think it's quite important and but i don't i don't know with what to connect it hold on scene while interviewing berkowitz uh in the beginning he seemed a bit i don't know if even if it's maybe a bit scared quiet than usual but then started to be more energetic <laughs> more himself again but yeah that was that uh, i think i'm gonna stop here thank you for watching i hope you enjoy and see you next time bye